After the ho-hum Wine Spectator Top 10 and Top 100 list, I think the Wine Enthusiast list is a breath of fresh air. I have to admit that I'm not a big fan of the reviewer scoring system. I think they score a bit high, plus I always don't know who the reviewer is but I have to give it to this list. When I go over a list list, these are wines that I'm interested in. You're not gonna see me talk a lot about a lot of Cabernet Sauvignon, American Chardonnay, or Pinot Noir. Let's go with number 100, the Silk Road 2016 Reserve Saparavi, 50 bucks. I haven't had this for a couple of vintages, but I just got back from Georgia. I'm going to Georgia about every year. My wine career actually started in Turkey, Georgia, Armenia. Saparavi is a very fun red grape. It's got red skins and red flesh, which is rare. It's a Tentoria variety, dark, inky. Georgian wines, the quality has really taken a leap over the last 10 years, but Saparavi was always pretty good. That means only now that the top Saparavis I think are outstanding. Really dark, rich, dense wine. Number 96, the Hernade dos Grush Baracas Red from the Alentejo in Portugal. 40 bucks, 92 points, it says. Toriga Nacional and Syrah. Alentejo is where there's a lot of cork production, a lot of cork trees. It's a really hot region. It's not as flat as a lot of people think. There's actually some hills and contours. Tariga Nacional and Syrah are a fantastic blend. Tariga Nacional is kind of like the flagship red variety of Portugal, although I prefer Tariga Franca. Small berries, high in tannins, high in acidity, kind of like the Cabernet Sauvignon of Portugal. Grown all over the country, I imagine this is good. Number 86, the Chateau de Pomar 2020 Clos Mary Mange. Not a cheap wine from Burgundy, from Pomar. Pomar wines traditionally are a little bit harder, but Chateau de Pomar, it was bought by an American businessman. The wines are a little bit softer than the typical Pomar. The, the quality is really high, as you can see with the high price. This actual wine showed up in a video a couple of years ago. I think, I think it was the 2020. These are excellent leathery. They have a, a heavy dose of oak, but it's integrated pretty well. Just big Burgundian red wines. They're expensive, but man, they're unique. Number 85, the Storm 2020, Vrede Pinot Noir. This is from the Hamel and Ard Valley in South Africa, a cool climate region. I have yet to go to South Africa. I got to make it there. Hamilton Russell is the big name there, and I love their Pinot Noir and Chardonnay. It makes me more curious to explore that area because those wines from Hamilton Russell are extraordinary. I do want to taste the Storm at 70 bucks, so it's not, not cheap. Number 81, the Sadie Family 2021 Mev Kirsten Chenin Blanc. 190 bucks for South Africa Chenin Blanc. I didn't even see that. I'm a big fan of the Chenin Blancs coming out of South Africa. Everything from the simple stainless steel ones to the big barrel fermented ones, which I'm guessing this is. I didn't see that it was so expensive. So maybe I'll, wow, that's a lot of money. Could be good though. Number 79, Oremus 2014, Tokai Asu, six Petunios, 146 bucks. No joke, man, Tokai is getting expensive. I'm a huge fan of Tokai Asu, one of the greatest wines in the world, in my opinion. Sweet wines with so much acidity that when you drink them, it, the acidity just washes your palate clean. Every time I give somebody a Tokai Asu for the first time, even if they say, I don't like dry wines, they're always amazed. I have a Tokai Asu video coming up. It's one of my favorite wines in the world. Oremos is owned by Vega Cecilia. They were one of the first companies to go in and reestablish, kind of rejuvenate the region in the early 90s. Tokai historically has been a great wine. Hungary went through a communist regime for a while, which made the Tokai kind of insipid, not so exciting. Oremus helped rejuvenate the region in the 90s, and they're worth checking out. I'm curious about number 70, the Checkmate 2020 opening Gambit Merlot from the Okanagan Valley. 100 bucks, wow. Not cheap, because a couple weeks ago at the Wine Spectator New York Experience, I tasted the Queen's Taken Chardonnay, and I was very impressed with it, so I'm really wondering how that wine will be. If any of you know, let me know. Number 67, the Dr. Birklin Wolf Geishbold Grand Cru Trocken Riesling. I have had this wine and it's extraordinary. Dry Riesling, it's from the Faults, the southern warmer area in Germany. This style of Riesling is more fruit forward than mineral driven just to let you know, but it's a rich, delicious wine. Number 66, one of my all-time favorite red wines, the Mouchau, 2016 Mouchau Red from Portugal, from the Alentejo, 66 bucks. I have visited Mouchau before back in 2019, uses Alicante Boucher because it does really well in Alentejo. Again, dark skin, dark flesh, grape variety, 
and not a well-heralded variety, but I remember visiting with a Japanese sommelier and she looked over at me and she said, I can't wait to tell my friends that I tried a great wine made out of Alicante Boucher. 56, the Johannes Zillinger 2021 Newman Fumé Blanc Sauvignon Blanc from Styria in Austria. I haven't had this vintage, but I have had past vintages before. Styria and South Styria in Austria is a premier region for Sauvignon Blanc. It's a nice blend between the tropical flavors of New Zealand, plus the mineral notes of the Loire, like Sancerre Puy Fumé, you put them both together. That's what you get in the Sauvignon Blancs from Styria and South Styria. It's not well-renowned on the world stage, but in Europe, these wines are very well-regarded. I think that wine is outstanding. Number 50, the Fattoria Le Pupile, 2020 Apoggio Le Poggio Valente Red, 50 bucks, 95 points. This is 100% Sangiovese from Marema in Tuscany. One of my favorite Sangiovese-based wines in all of Italy. Fattoria Le Pupile is known more for Safredi. They're super Tuscan, their Bordeaux blend, which is expensive, but I prefer Poggio Valente. I think it's just an outstanding wine. Number 43, the Blandis 1989 Circiel from Madeira in Portugal. I just love it. The wines from Madeira, geeky wines, 390 bucks, not cheap. Madeira, I love the nutty flavors, but I love the acidity that comes from Madeira. It's one of the very few wine regions I have not been to yet. I go to Portugal a lot. I have to make it over that way soon. Number 3837, Vietti, the 2020 Monviliero Nebbiolo Barolo, 97 points. Vietti is one of the great producers in Piedmont. Yes, they sold a couple of years ago to an American company, but the quality still should be high. This is one of their crew wines. I've had a couple vintages of it, and I have to say it's spectacular, but it's way too young to drink now. you got to age this wine. 37 Sesti 2017 Phenomena Reserva Sangiovese. This must be a Brunello de Montalcino. I've never tasted I like Sesti a lot because they're more traditional, elegant Brunello de Montalcinos. I have not tasted this wine, so I'm curious to taste it. Number 31, the Xanadu 2021 Reserve Chardonnay, 100 bucks from Margaret River in Australia. I am such a huge fan of the Chardonnay coming out of Margaret River in Western Australia. I know it's known for Cabernet Sauvignon, but I think I've gotten more excited about the Chardonnays and the Shiraz coming out of the region. Xanadu is a fantastic producer, one of, one of the best, one of the well-distributed ones you actually find in America. Even their basic Cabernet Sauvignon is really good. I have not tried that reserve Chardonnay in a long time since I lived in Singapore, but I want to try it. Number 29, I said I was not going to do a Cabernet Sauvignon, but we're going to do it. The Clos Duval 2022 Cabernet Sauvignon, 92.60 bucks. Clos Duval started by a Frenchman. I think still, I don't know if they sold or I can't remember if they're owned still by a Frenchman. One of the wines that participated in the Judgment of Paris in 1976. Clos Duval is one of those producers in Napa that have kept their prices relatively reasonable 60 bucks i know it's not cheap but the way napa cab is these days usually you have to spend 90 100 bucks to get in i like their classic style they're not too jammy i really enjoy them number 26 the borgonia 2019 barolo 94 points there's no price here I've always liked Borgonia's style, especially with their Barolos, and they're relatively easy to get. You see them distributed around the U.S. I don't think they're the most moving Barolos in the world, but they are very, very good and approachable, and they have a big library of old vintages, so if you ever visit them, you can go ahead and sometimes taste some older vintages. Number 22, the Niskelin 2021 Ice Wine Cabernet Franc. I just talk about them because one of my favorite wines at the Wine Spectator New York experience a few weeks ago was their Riesling Ice Wine 2021. I have not tasted their Cabernet Franc, but it's really interesting to me. I've tasted a lot of these leafy red grapes made into ice wines like El Bernay, which is a cross of Alicante Boucher, Cabernet Sauvignon. I've tasted some great ones in Slovakia because you have those red fruit flavors, but you have that leafiness. Number 21, I guess I am going to go with a California Pinot the Shannon 2021 Wild King Vineyard Pinot Noir, 97.60 bucks. Shannon is one of these classic producers in Santa Barbara County. Understated, plenty of fruit, yet their wines are fairly affordable, fairly, by the, with the way that U.S. Pinot Noir is going. Number 17, I don't want this wine, the Vega Cecilia 2019 Macan from Rioja, 120 bucks. 
I like I love Rioja to death. I've never liked this wine. I know it's a partnership, I think, between the Rothschild family and Vega Cecilia. It to me just doesn't taste like Rioja. It tastes like kind of big Bordeaux or Napa Cab. That's just to my taste, you know, whatever. Number 12, good on wine enthusiasts, the, um, the Medici Hermete 2022 Fermento Lambrusco Refermentario in Bottiglia Lambrusco di Silbara. 94 points, 29 bucks. So this is a Lambrusco that's made with a second fermentation like champagne. Dry Lambruscos are really the way to go. They are so delicious. They're not the most complex wine in the world. They're just super delicious. And 29 bucks is a way to get in. I'll never forget, when I took a sabbatical from chiropractic practice and started traveling around the world, for an anniversary present, I took my parents for the first couple weeks, not wine drinkers, but I remember in Emilia Romagna, I put down a bottle of Lambrusco and my mother, who only drinks Pepsi, my goodness, yeah. Anyways, I left and took a nap and she came back and she was all tipsy because she drank the entire bottle of Lambrusco because she didn't know it was alcohol and she said, this is better than Pepsi and she was all tipsy. Lambrusco is just plain out delicious everybody's gonna like it. I haven't tried that one, but I want to. Number 10, the Vos Felix 2022 Hatesbury Chardonnay. That's gonna show up in a future video. I shot it earlier in the year. I just haven't gotten around to re releasing it yet, but man, it's a good wine. I was really impressed. Number nine, the Domaine du Pigot 2019 Cuvée Reserve Red from Chateauneuf de Pop. One of the classic producers of Chateauneuf de Pop. I've been to the estate several times. Laurence is fantastic. And it's just a bready, leathery, more traditional French wine. Not everybody loves it, but I like that style a lot. Of the rest of the top 10, I'm not super excited about the rest of them, but I do think you should check out the Castella di Nieve, number 5, 2019, Santo Stefano Barbaresco Reserva for 80 bucks. Santo Stefano is one of the legendary vineyards in Barbaresco. In fact, the Bruno Giacosa Santo Stefano, is I've, I've had it before, is super expensive, but a way to get in on this vineyard for 80 bucks, especially because 2019 Barbaresco's Barolos, to me, are just spellbinding. Not quite as good, maybe, as the 2016's, which I think are just simply extraordinary, but they're pretty darn close. And a way to jump in at a pedigree vineyard, Barolo Barbaresco price is going to keep rising, so it's worth checking out. So those are the things that I want to try on this list. What about you? Have you checked out the Wine Enthusiast Top 100 list? What do you think? I'd love to hear in the comments below.